Chapter 5 of James Stewart's Calculus textbook now moves on to the second part of calculus, which is integral calculus. The first chapters of Stewart have dealt with differential calculus. Differential calculus was the attempt of Isaac Newton and uh, Gottfried Leibniz to address what was called the slope problem. And what they did is, is uh, the slope of, a, of a, a line is the rise over the run, basically y over x. And so to find the, the tangent, um, the, uh, the slope of a tangent line to a, any kind of a graph, they basically made x approach 0. So the limit as delta x, the limit as the change of x approaches 0, um, got them to basically the slope at a particular point of the graph. The second part of calculus doesn't deal with the slope problem. It deals with what's called the, the area problem. How do you find, for example, the area under a graph like this? It's a very variable graph. This particular graph was generated by me just coming up with some numbers. Um, let's say you're in a car, you're on a road, you're going straight, um, and every five seconds you look at your speedometer and, and, and write down, or somebody else in the car hopefully writes down um, how fast you're going. And as you can see, I made these numbers very random. So you were going 10 miles per hour, uh, meters per second, sorry, 10 meters per second at, uh, when, when we started keeping track, and then 8 meters per second, 5 seconds later, you were going 26 meters per second, 10 seconds later, and so forth. Well, the graph comes out something like this. And so um, the, the y axis here is velocity, and the uh, x axis here is time. Velocity times time is distance, as uh, you might remember from physics. That makes sense, because if you take meters per second and you multiply by second, uh, you get meters. So velocity times time uh, is distance. So basically, if you multiply the uh, time by the velocity, you're going to get dis distance. Well, that ends up basically to be something like the area under this curve. So for example, uh, if we were to draw little boxes where, let's say at, at, at two seconds, um, you multiplied two, uh, the time, times whatever that velocity is, that would give you the distance. So, so basically, these little boxes, uh, uh, the area of a rectangle, you'll remember, is the multiplication of the sides. So um, basically, the smaller these boxes are, these are about two seconds each per box, the smaller we make each box, the, the closer we're going to get to something like the area under this this curve, which is going to tell us the distance. And so what uh, Leibniz and, and, and Newton realized is that we can kind of do something similar to what they did with the slope, that the, that the limit as delta x approaches 0. That is, the smaller we make these increments, um, the more, the closer and closer we're going to get to the area under, under this curve. Um, and another way to put the, the area of um, the sum, uh, the sum of the areas of all these teeny triangles. It, it, this is one way to, to put it. So let's say that we divide up this amount of time, say from zero to you know 42. Let's say that we divide up that you know by two second intervals. Well, then delta x um, is going to be you know basically two two seconds each. Um, and um, f of x1, f of x2, this is basically how high uh, what the y is, or in this case the velocity, is at each point, at each two second point. So at the first point, you know, two seconds in, you know, then it's going to be um, delta x, two seconds, times whatever the height is at that point. And then four seconds in, you know, two more seconds in, um, whatever the height is at that point, and then two more seconds in, whatever the height is at this time. So the more ends we have, that is the more the more times we divide up this, then the more the closer and closer we're going to get to the actual total area under that curve. Well another way to write that, uh, and Leibniz came up with this this notation, I believe, uh, I believe that's correct, is that the limit as n approaches infinity, that is the more times we divide up 
uh, the more rectangles we have under that uh, curve, the more the more we divide up under it, that is the closer delta x gets to zero, um, then as n approaches infinity from one of the sum of from one to how infinity, you know, of each little interval, uh, what the height is, f of x is the height, the the y or in this case the velocity at each at each of these little increments. If we add up the increment times the height of that increment at each of these infinite points, then we're going to end up with the area under this curve. That is, if we take this amount underneath and we divide it up into an infinite number of little increments, which means the delta x is approaching zero or n is approaching infinity, then the delta x, that is the little interval, times the height at that interval, which is f of x at that point, um, if I add up all those little, little, little rectangles, I'm going to end up with the precise area under that graph. That's basically what integral calculus is about. Integral calculus is about finding a way to, to add up all of the sums under the graph of a curve. And it's basically going in the opposite direction of differentiating, as we'll see in section 3 of uh, James Stewart's chapter 5.